A 150 by 150 millimeter tile needs to be replaced in the deep end of a swimming pool. The top of the tile is located two meters below the surface of the water. What is the total force on the tile? So let's draw a little picture of what's going on. This may not be necessary if you can see what's happening in this problem, but couldn't hurt. Just to get a sense of what's going on, we've got a pool, it's pretty deep. Somewhere down toward the bottom of the pool, there's a tile. And that tile, we're being told that the top of the tile is two meters from the top of the water. And we know the dimensions of the tile, let's zoom in on that, is 150 by 150 millimeters. That's the length and also the height. And this is a hydrostatics problem, so the way we want to think about this, if we're being asked to find what's the total force on the tile, the tile has some area, which we can figure out by length times height or length times width, and it has some amount of pressure being exerted on it. So the pressure is the average force divided by the area. And if we want to know the total force, we can rearrange that and say force equals pressure times area. But really what we want is the average pressure because the tile is actually oriented vertically. So the pressure is going to be different at the top of the tile than it is at the bottom. The column of water that's pushing on the bottom of the tile is greater in height than the column of water that's pushing on the top. And the average would be somewhere along the tile's center line. So the average pressure is along the tile center line. So you can either find the top and the bottom and then take the average, or you can just pick a location in terms of height that's halfway down the tile, which is the approach I'm gonna recommend here. So this is how we're gonna find the force. We gotta find the average pressure, and the area is pretty straightforward. So let's get the area quick. The area is going to be, let's do this in meters. So instead of 150 millimeters, I'll call it 0.15 meters squared, since it's a square, 0.0225 square meters. And now the force being exerted on the tile, again, is gonna be the average hydrostatic pressure across the area of the tile, which varies as a function of the water depth. So let's take advantage of the fact that this is a square if we want to know the height, then it's literally just the two meters plus half of the height of the tile. So two meters plus 75 millimeters. What does that work out to? That's the height of the center line of the tile. Two meters plus half of 150 is 75, but I'll write it out as 0.15 meters divided by two. That's 2.075 meters below the top surface of the water for the center line of the tile. So now we're able to find the average pressure on the tile or the pressure along that center line, that's going to be given by one of our favorite equations, rho GH. So the density of water is a number that we'll end up memorizing if we haven't already, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And that height that we just found, 2.075 meters. And let's check the units. We got meters squared in the numerator over meters cubed. So we're gonna have meters in the denominator. We had a situation just like this in a previous problem. So maybe you'll remember how we got there. We had kilogram meter second squared. What is that? And we used a clever little trick. We multiplied by meters in both the numerator and denominator, which is legal. It's not changing the value when we do that. And then we recall that kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So this all ends up equaling, I didn't even write the number, it just went straight to the units. But if you calculate that number, it's 20,356 newtons per meter squared, which is pascals. Once you get really comfortable with this, you may just find yourself writing it out and saying, ah, I know that's gonna be a pascal, or you may remember that kilogram meter per second squared is pascal. And if that happens for you, that's fine, and I welcome that, but it's very easy to make a mistake with units, so I'd rather have you, if you're not 100% confident, go through the units, write it out, and then find a way to get there, even if it's multiple steps, where you can be confident in each and every step. And um, there's no kind of quantum leaps where we're just hoping the units work out and you end up off by a factor of 10 or you know who knows what can happen. So that's the average pressure. And now all we gotta do is come back up to this formula here and calculate the total force on the tile. Force is average pressure times area. So 20,356 pascals. You could write it as pascals, or you might even want to write it as newton per meter squared, which is what a pascal is, since we're going to be multiplying that by area now. And the area is 0 0.0225 meters squared. It's nice to do it that way. We can see meters squared cancel out, and we'll get the final answer in newtons to match up with the answer choices. 458 newtons is closest to answer choice B.